Cidade. Here. Trustee Calendrello. Here. Trustee Ely. Here. Trustee Katsinas. Here. Trustee Malani. Here. Here, Pico. Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Approval of March 1st, 2021, regular meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting of March 1st, 2021. Second. Any questions, call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Approval of Fe February 22nd, 2021, special meeting minutes. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to approve the minutes of the Board of Trustees meeting of February 22nd, 2021. Second. Any changes? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Recreation Advisory Board appointment. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Move to advice and consent the appointment of Jim Pitacora to the Recreation Advisory Board. Second. Any questions or comments, call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Ely. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. I'm gonna swear Jim in here. Thanks, Jim, for joining and uh, filling up our Recreation Advisory Board, which uh, now has is, is given stuff that they actually do, unlike in the past. So, thanks again. Hearing officer appointment. Mr. Mayor. Trustee Katsinas. I move to confer the appointment of David G. Eterno as village hearing officer, and I move to approve a contract with David G. Eterno uh, for village hearing officer services at a cost of $175 per hour. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Getsinas. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Accounts payable from March 2nd, 2021 to March 15, 2021, in the amount of $2,064,744.11. Mr. Chairman? Trustee Milani. Was it, oh, it was Trustee Healy? Like I said, I can't tell you the, tell the voices apart. I can't hear where it's coming from. I move to approve the accounts payable from March 2nd, 2021 through March 15th, 2021 in the amount of $2,064,744.11. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Ely. Aye. Trustee Malani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calendrello. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Agenda. 
Item A, payroll for March 5th, 2021 approval. Item B, Villas of Cobblestone, special service area number eight, ordinance proposing the establishment of a special service area and providing for a public hearing. Item C, special, uh, Orland Ridge, special service area number seven, ordinance proposing the establishment of a special service area and providing for a public hearing. Item D, Disposal of Village Equipment Online Auction Public Works Department Ordinance. Item E, Hay and Associates Plan Review and Landscape Architect Services co uh, Contract 2021 Renewal. Item F, Brown Park Stormwater Improvements Rejection. Item G, Fireworks RFP. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Move to approve items A through G of the consent agenda. Second. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Dodge. I'd like items B and C removed for separate consideration. I'll entertain a motion to approve items A and then D through G of the consent agenda. Hello. Second. Call the roll. Jesse Fenton. Aye. Jesse Healy. Aye. Jesse Dodge. Aye. Jesse Calandrello. Aye. Jesse Getzinas. Aye. Jesse Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Villas of Cobbles, Cobblestone. Mr. Uh, ordinance number, please. 5594. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. That would be me. Uh, move to pass ordinance number 5591. An ordinance. 5594. 5594, okay. Um, an ordinance proposing the establishment of special service area number eight in the village of Orland Park and providing for a public hearing and other pr procedures in connection therewith. Second. Mr. Any, Chairman. Any questions or comments? Trustee Dodge. George, question for you and your staff. When did we talk about formalizing this policy? I remember we've discussed it previously, but we never had that meeting where we actually got down and articulated a policy about doing this because there were open questions. So, uh, Trustee Dodge, that item was discussed in July of 2020. Um, and these, the items before you tonight for Orland Ridge and Villas of Cobblestone, they had previously agreed to and it had been approved in their development agreement for this SSA requirement in April of 2020 and August of 2020, respectively. It was, we previously agreed to a private bond. Correct. With and them. questions were brought up about that policy and we committed to having a meeting about the policy. Correct. We haven't had that meeting, correct? That is correct. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor. Trustee Calandrello. I just I have a question for Dennis. I know there's a, what happens when we have to maybe add more water to, the, to that pond or if there's some issues upflow or downflow? I mean, do we have complete authority to do whatever the village needs to do to protect from flooding? Yes. And who would have to pay for that? I think it's gonna depend on the circumstances. Okay, because that's the only thing I'm concerned is the policy. I mean, there's a policy where it's going almost like second class or different classes of, of homeowners, but more I'm worried about is when we own the pond, we don't have to ask the association for anything. So that's the only concern I have. But I was just wondering about that legal um, question. Thank you. Any other comments? Just one question, Ed. Uh, this was unanimously approved by the Planning Commission and by the Village Board in the past, correct? That's correct. All right, thank you very much. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Gatsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Orland Ridge Special Service Area Number Seven. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to pass ordinance number 5595 entitled an ordinance proposing the establishment of a special service area number seven in the village of Orland Park and providing for the public hearing and other procedures in connection therewith. Second. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Dodge. Same point. We all committed to uh, developing a policy on this one and we haven't. Uh, same point. Uh uh, Ed, we unanimously approved this at the Planning Commission with this condition, and we unanimously approved this at the Village Board, correct? That's correct. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Dodge. And we agreed we were going to have a policy discussion, which we have not. Those two were tied together, at least in this trustee's opinion. You're entitled to your opinion. Yes, I am. Any other comments? Call the roll. 
Trustee Fine. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Count Drell. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Motion passes 7 0. Move on to the next. Tyler Braz Brazos e citation and encode court software purchase and contract amendment. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. I move to approve the purchase of Tyler Brazos encode parking MV encode enforcement software from Tyler Technologies at a cost not to exceed $58,399. And I move to authorize the village manager to execute an amended agreement with Tyler Technologies for Tyler Brazos encode court software. Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Um, you know, I'm glad to see that we're actually implementing uh, new software packages and you know, continually finding great efficiency in our processes here. I think this is gonna take care of a lot of double work that's been going on. We have double entry of information and that's usually a huge waste of time. So being able to do this uh, and being able to set us up for integrating into some of our other processes and into the new ERP, I think this is a great step. So uh, thank you for bringing this in. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Dodge. I'd like to echo Trustee Milani's comments. This is a, another step in a long plan we've had to uh, do exactly this. Glad to see it happening, as with other changes. Any other comments? Mr. Mayor. Trustee Katsinas. Just wondering if Chief could talk to how it would expedite work on his end with his personnel with the system. Certainly, I was a uh, green belt. Uh, certified. We looked at some process improvement plans. Uh, this is a process. We've had a lot of pain points on this regarding double inputting. Um, the cost for citations under custom citations was very expensive. This system is going to be able to rectify that. We're going to have an officer simply just type in, print out the ticket, the PD, the correction, either the PD or in the squad car, and that's already been integrated in our RMS system, our records management system, so that'll be fantastic for us. That'll free me up that particular sports services people for other more important things like body-worn camera, uh, FOIA requests, and redactions. Thank you, Chief. Any other comments? Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Mayor Pico. <coughs> Grasslands Regional Flood Control Pond Expansion Bid Award. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. Move to approve accepting the bid for construction for the Grasslands Regional Flood Control Facility proposal from Schwartz Construction Company, Inc. of Countryside, Illinois, in an amount of $668,014.39 plus $60,000 Contingency for a total of seven hundred and twenty-eight thousand fourteen dollars and thirty-nine cents. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Asphalt roadway crack filling. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Fenton. We would approve awarding ITB 21-014 asphalt roadway crack filling 2021-2023 to Dendler Inc. of Joliet, Illinois in an amount not to exceed $100,000 for fiscal year 2021 and an amount not to exceed the board approved funding for fiscal years 2022 and 2023. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Zoning map update. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. Uh, can I have an ordinance number, Chad? Got it right. 5597. I move to pass ordinance number 5597 entitled the ordinance approving the publication of an updated zoning district map. Second. Any comments? Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. And just so everyone knows, that's just an annual update that we need to do. So it's just routine business. Next. Title Seven, Chapter 15, Tobacco License. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. Uh, ordinance number, John? 
5598. I move to pass ordinance number 5598 titled an ordinance amending title 7 chapter 15 of the Orland Park Village Code in regard to the purchase or possession of tobacco or alternative nicotine products and license classification. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Jesse Ealy. Aye. Jesse Dodge. Aye. Jesse Fenton. Aye. Jesse Calandrello. Aye. Jesse Katsinas. Aye. Jesse Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Recreation Advisory Board recommendation. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Move to approve the installation of backstop and dugout fences at Village Square in Ishnala Woods Parks to remove home run fencing posts at Village Square Park to change from a grass infield to a dirt or gravel infield at Ishnala Woods Park and to add one soccer goal at Ishnala Woods Park. Second. Um, could you give us a quick overview, Ray? I'll just give you a quick background. <clears throat> so yeah, back in November, we, uh, we had uh, gained approval to install some uh, fencing at uh, Ishnala Woods and Village Square Parks. At the time, that included home run fencing. <clears throat> and when we started to do the installation, we received op opposition from residents in the neighborhoods. Uh, so we stopped the installation and held a neighborhood meeting. At the neighborhood meeting, we gave residents a chance to voice their concerns. And there were quite a few concerns, you know, ranging from <clears throat> parking issues, safety of children, uh, increased use of the field. So things that I think were a little bit of a mis perception of how the fields were going to be used. The intent of the field really all along was just to improve the fields. Uh, the Recreation Advisory Board <clears throat> hosted another meeting uh, in, um, I think it was February or March, sorry. Uh, and at the meeting, residents, again, we had about 60 in attendance also voiced their concerns uh, in regards to the parks. Many of the concerns that were voiced, <clears throat> to be honest, were concerns that are currently uh, already at the park, so they weren't really related to how the improvements at the park. So they talked about, you know, children playing <clears throat> across on the field, running across the field. Uh, there were some concerns about a change in the use of the park, but again, our, our intent was never to change the use of the park. So this is uh, Ishnala Woods Park, and this is the current layout. This is just the grass field here with the bases. Uh, there is a backstop here that was removed. Uh, and there's a soccer goal that you can see or barely see there. <clears throat> this shows a rendition of what the park would look like. This would probably be a screened um, or dirt field, and there would be dugout fencing on the two sides here and a backstop. <clears throat> and then again, the soccer goal would just be put there. Uh, and that was really the only intent. <clears throat> These fields are used by uh, Shetland and, and uh, um, <clears throat> Pinto League. Uh, so those are four to seven-year-old children. There is really no change in the use of the park. This is the Village Square Park as it currently lies. <clears throat> Again, there's a backstop that's been removed. And then this is the change. A little hard to see there, but you can see some dugout fencing here and the backstop, and that really is the only change. So originally, again, there was going to be a home run fencing. After hearing concerns from the residents, uh, we reproposed this to the advisory board, and this is what they proposed. <clears throat> so as a summary, uh, in the shallow woods, <clears throat> would just be a change from uh, the current grass field to dirt or gravel. And really, this is safer for the children. Uh, the balls are a little more true to play. <clears throat> There's less of a chance to, to fall, trip, twist an ankle. Uh, just the backstops, the dugout, dugout fencing, one soccer goal. <clears throat> Again, Pinto and Shetland leagues only. Uh, last in 2019, before the pandemic, there were only 10 rentals there during the year, so that's, there's no intent to increase that use. That was about 20 hours, <clears throat> and the season is only April through June. At Village Square, uh, same thing, so the change is a backstop and dugout fencing only. Uh, the home run fence that were <clears throat> caused all the concern will be removed. Uh, again, Pinto and Shetland Leagues only. Uh, in tw 2019, there were 36 rentals <clears throat> from April through June, and that was about 72 hours worth of use. There, we wouldn't uh, propose any change in the use of the fields. Thanks, Ray. Sure. Any comments, questions? Mr. Mayor. Trust Calandrello. I just uh, want to thank the Record Advisory Board for reviewing this. Um, I, I think it was a little backwards, but um, I think uh, this is the fourth park this season that had some, or at least in the last year and a half, that we had to stop construction and or even pull stuff out. Um, so I look forward to when we do pass next year's uh, play sets and remodeling that we actually have a set plan before we do construction to tell people what's going on. And maybe we'll find some issues that we don't know 
not living in that area or whatnot. So um, I appreciate the board kind of, the recreational board picking up our slack and hopefully in the future that slack won't be there. Absolutely. Any other comments? Um, in the future, actually, it will go to the Recreation Advisory Board first, right. like it should. And I know we've been pushing for those changes for several years. Absolutely. Um, so um, thanks, and I appreciate it. Um, call the roll. Trustee Milani? Aye. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Dodge? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Trustee Getzinas? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. Transfer of 2021 volume cap. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. Move to pass ordinance number 5599 entitled an ordinance approving the transfer of volume cap in connection with private activity bond issues and related matters. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Selection of ERP project manager. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. I move to authorize the village manager to execute a contract with Insight Public Sector Incorporated for enterprise resource planning project manager slash analyst for a total contract cost of $613,248 plus a 10% contingency for a total project management expense of $674,573. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Getzinas. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Main Street Triangle Development Memorandum of Understanding and Real Estate Consulting Agreement. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. I move to approve the attached Memorandum of Understanding with Edwards Realty relative to the Triangle TIF District Redevelopment Project, and I move to approve the attached Real Estate Consulting Agreement with Edwards Realty relative to the Triangle TIF District Redevelopment Project, and I move to authorize the village president to execute both the Memorandum of Understanding and Real Estate Consulting Agreement with Edwards Realty. Second. I think this is really exciting, and uh, um, if uh, Edwards Realty could come up and give us an uh, overview. Mr. Mayor, if I could just maybe just a little bit of background. Sure. Before. So in 2018, the village uh, completed a full RFP process to select the master developer for the balance of the developable property in the Triangle Tiff District. Two finalists uh, were selected, Structured Development and Edwards Realty, um, and they were carefully reviewed by the Board of Trustees. In December 2018, the Board of Trustees elected to work with Structured de Development on terms for a master development agreement. Stra staff worked with Structured Development throughout 2019 and 20, but the challenging times brought about by the COVID pandemic substantially altered Structured Development's plan and proposal. It be became clear that uh, the parties would have to part ways. On October 6, 2020, uh, the village and Structured parted ways, and uh, the village was free to explore other finalists' proposal. So immediately thereafter, um, based on um, uh, the village's board recommendation or um, direction, staff re-engaged with Edwards Realty. And then uh, Edward, uh, in our discussions, Edwards Realty be, uh, believes that uh, a significant portion of their original plan remains viable. So the next step to uh, validate those plans is to more fully develop and review a plan along with the financial veracity of that plan to ensure all parties are satisfied with the product and prepared to enter into a full MDA to implement that vision. So the uh, MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding that we're discussing, and the real estate consulting agreement collectively set forth the village's approach and mutual understanding to work with Edwards Realty on the design and development of the project for the remaining 9.15 acres of land in the TIF Triangle. This approach allows the village and the developer to work in a flexible and collaborative approach, approach as we continue to move out of COVID-19. So specifically, the MOU sets forth the property and process to collaboratively design a redevelopment plan, including defining the terms and conditions of which the MDA can be negotiated with 
the future master developer. The real estate consulting agreement outlines the terms of the exclusive consulting arrangement to be utilized to assist the village in defining the redevelopment plan as contemplated under the MOU. The MOU has no financial impact and the compensation contemplated under the real estate consulting agreement is deferred throughout the term of the agreement and would therefore need to be budgeted in 2022 only if a successful MDA is not reached with Edwards Realty within 12 months. So we have Scott Day, uh, Attorney Scott Day, and uh, KTJ Attorney Tom Bayer. They're in attendance to answer any questions relative to the MOU and the real estate consulting agreement. So since the time the Village Board provided staff with the direction to collaborate with Edwards Realty, the relationship with Edwards has been nothing but professional and, and engaging. It's clear that Edwards Realty is committed to this project and the community. We are excited to move forward with this project. I'd ask uh, Ramsey Hassan of Edwards Realty to introduce his team as well as to preview, preview the preliminary concept plan. Hello, good evening, Mayor, Village Board. Uh, Ramsey Hassan, President, Edwards Realty Company. Uh, I'd like to introduce some members of my team. Uh, Edward Hassan, Chairman. Uh, Derek Hassan, Vice President. Uh, Taylor Blagrave, Chief of Staff. And we have uh, David Tanner, Attorney. We have Katie Mulrennan, uh, one of our contractors at ICI. And uh, Bob Rohde, uh, our banker, keeping an eye on the designs to make sure they're not too expensive and can be financed. Um, I'm a resident of Orland Park. We own uh, Orland Park Crossing across the street. We brought it out of bankruptcy, or we bought it out of bankruptcy in uh, two different transactions from 2013 and 2015 and turned that around into a stabilized center. We developed the southeast corner where City Barbecue is, so we've had success on uh, two sides of LaGrange Road and want to bring that success over here, which has been uh, longing for it ever since I moved to Orland Park 15 years ago. So uh, these are strictly concepts. These are things that we have uh, worked only for the last month or so on when we were engaged with the village staff. There's a lot of work to do to get to a final plan, but these are the concepts we'd like to put forth. There still has to be a lot of uh, collaboration with the village staff. Uh, we'd like to have public comment uh, outside of plan commission and, and those kind of things and hear from the public. Uh, so we're very excited to kind of dive back into this and a lot of our success has come uh, from being the second guy in and we do get the job done. So without further ado, I'd like to dive in. So some of the concept words, um, and this has already been in the public realm for a long time. So. Uh, the public has had time to comment, it, uh, comment on it, so has staff and public officials, and these are the things that keep coming up. So as we're talking about our plans, as we're thinking about what Orland Park needs and having a center uh, for the village, which we don't have, um, these are the things we were thinking about and our team has been thinking about. Uh, we can move on. These are just some, uh, some imagery that help with some inspiration for uh, activations of some of the districts that we want to create within the development. Uh, the public space activation, which any downtown uh, has to be a center of commerce, a uh, place to live, work, play, all those things, but the public spaces are of the utmost importance, especially here. So as we dive in, this is, um, again, a concept plan of the, of the site. And we have several parcels on the site, and at, just in the concept plan, we also have some iterations of the different parcels just to show the flexibility within the site plan. So I'll start off by going parcel by parcel, and um, at the north end of the site, we have a, uh, you know, if you could go back to the, the one before that? Okay, at the north end of the site, we have uh, a water feature. Now, we're not showing it exactly yet on here. Our engineers still need to work on it, but we want that to be an enhanced water feature. Uh, this should be an amenity. This should be something to look at, something to hang out at, and complement everything else in the site. Okay. 
So for parcel A and B, we are envisioning an entertainment district. Now this is something that Orland doesn't have. We have some entertainment in the restaurant realm, but it's scattered all throughout the village. And that's okay, but what we do need to have is a center. And you know, think of it as almost like a Beale Street or a Bourbon Street type. Uh, maybe not as crazy, but still as entertaining. So we wanna have a collection of specialty retail, bars, restaurants, and entertainment. And we've, we've had a lot of success in our portfolio where we have envisioned and uh, been very, very uh, focused uh, on, on what uses we think should go where. And entertainment, especially in Orland Park, has been a reoccurring theme. So in order to do some of these things, what we're envisioning on this parcel is on parcel A, um, and also the, this is a mixed use environment. So we wanna have office uses. So a lot of the things that we've heard from the restaurants in, in town, whether it are restaurants as our tenants or elsewhere is the daytime population is lagging here. And you know, that's a, you know, that's a, a hole that we need to fill. And we do think because of the pandemic, the office market has changed. Now that people are not um, going downtown or companies are rethinking where their offices should be and it's more of a you know satellite office model so that is going to bode very well for places like orland park um, so we think that the office demand is going to increase and we you know we're envisioning uh, the first floor of commercial uh, which would be retail entertainment uh, probably more in the restaurant uh, restaurant realm and the second through fifth floors would be uh, office of 21,000 square foot floor plates. And then we want to have a 5,000 square foot uh, rooftop, uh, a, I'm sorry, a rooftop restaurant and, with a patio um, on the top of the building. Not only will this be a great amenity for the office tenants that will occupy there and be a great selling point, uh, this is an amenity for everyone in the village. Uh, and something that's needed, and we've talked to operators that are very interested. Um, we think that in, in that parcel A, most of the tenants on the ground floor, again, will be the restaurant uh, entertainment type users, but we did envision a, a what we're calling here out parcel building commercial of 9,000 square feet right next to it, which would be primarily retail. And there are several uh, retail tenants that we've talked to that with this uh, with this type of setup in this environment, it bodes very well for the small shop space that uh, that you know may not fit into um, you know let's say Orland Square Mall or Orland Park Crossing. These can be uh, a little more dynamic and a little more um, flexible space. And there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of retailers that are online that would like to have bricks and mortar space. And these are the ones that we're envisioning. They'll be one to two thousand square feet and we think we can fill that 9,000 square foot building. In order to do that, we'd have to have uh, garage parking uh, on that site that we envision if, uh, let's see here, uh, for 300 cars to uh, service that. Now on parcel B, which is right, and, and that, uh, I believe that's Jefferson Street in the middle, that would be pedestrian only. So that would be all outdoor seating, different activations, different structures, um, lots of landscaping, and it would vary. We'd have a program that would, uh, that would have standards for what can be put outside, but a lot of those businesses will be able to have their own branding in a, in a well-maintained, high-class manner. Now, on parcel B, we're envisioning a five-story mixed-use building uh, that would be primarily commercial on the first floor, uh, and then we'd have residential above. And we would have some underground parking to accommodate just that residential. Now, as I'm going through and talking about some of these things, I do want to remind, these are concepts. So when we're talking about possibly residential on top of the building at Parcel B, um, this is an iteration that doesn't anticipate residential on other parts of the site. So a lot of these are puzzle pieces that can get moved around. And as we go through some of these things, I'll kind of explain how some of these things can move. So uh, again, Parcel B, we're looking at, again, the retail, restaurant, and some residential on the second through uh, uh, fifth floor uh, with an out parcel on LaGrange Road, uh, which would be ideal for a restaurant or retail use with some maximum exposure. Okay, so this is our current Crescent Park. Uh, we wanna put a huge building on it and we want to have an, enter uh, an entertainment user. Um, I'll go 
in slides further down, I'll explain why we don't want the park there, but again, this is just a concept. So we're talking with a couple users on the entertainment side who would uh, be able to fill and have about a 1,500 to 2,000 person uh, you know, multi-purpose facility, an arena, that we'd be able to throw concerts, be able to have e-sports competitions uh, for civic uses, theater, things like that. And that would draw um, a, lot, uh, a lot of business to the area, a lot of commerce, and help support some of the other uses. Um, this is a tall task, and uh, if something like this doesn't work out, we do have Plan B and Plan C, which could possibly be a mixed-use building. So when I talked about before possibly doing residential on top of Parcel B, uh, that would be because we're taking up you know, an entertainment use and not doing it on other parts of the site. So if we end up not moving forward with an entertainment use and doing a mixed-use building with primarily retail, commercial on the first floor, and residential above, that would necessitate us not having to do that potentially on parcel B and having that be a, a one- or two-story building. So we're not looking to put residential everywhere. We're looking to put residential somewhere. That is option two for the Crescent Park parcel. If we do not do residential on parcel B, uh, above commercial, we would do residential above commercial on the Crescent Park parcel, and that's, uh, that's what it would look like. And that would be, if we did that, that would have to have its own garage for those cars, about 180 cars, three floors above grade, possibly one below grade, and that's similar to what you know, we're envisioning uh, for those uses. Parcel H, uh, this is right up against LaGrange Road. Um, you know, this is where uh, we envision retail uh, restaurant uses. Um, we do have one iteration with a drive-through in there, which a lot of tenants nowadays are are requesting. We only anticipate having high-end uh, high-end users here, so the drive-through is not uh, something we're necessarily seeking. But we want to show the flexibility to potential tenants. A lot of the uses up on Lagrange Road will garner the most. Uh, you know, the highest lease rates, the most income, and you know, that's why it's very important that we're able to do some of those things on LaGrange as much as possible to help finance some of the other things that we're gonna do um, away from LaGrange Road that uh, don't garner as, as, much, uh, uh, as much rent, but uh, still equally as important uh, to the fabric of the downtown. So this is parcel C. This is that uh, triangle within a triangle uh, between 9750 and the railroad tracks. Uh, one iteration we have is senior housing. There seems to be a demand in the area. There's an aging population. Um, you know, to have something like this in the city center, but not exactly in the center, I think would bode well for the site. And uh, you know, obviously a very marketable use. Uh, we have uh, another iteration of this which is a uh, one-story potential daycare facility. This is a uh, high-end daycare that is interested uh, in Orland Park in this area now that we are able to move on. So this is a little bit, I wanted to show the dif and differentiate between you know, a higher density use on the, um, for the assisted living side, or we can go you know, right down to a one-story building uh, and have a daycare facility, which I think would, would bode very well for uh, working parents taking the train and uh, you know uh, other families in Orland Park there um, is a is a definite need that a lot of them have identified here so moving on and this goes against uh, you know anything I've ever been taught in development you take the nicest parcel and biggest parcel and you turn it into a park so we you know we just feel that this is the best use of the of this space it's right in the center and we would like to uh, really have this as, as part of the community, uh, have these activations for all residents of Orland Park and the surrounding suburbs, and something to be proud of and something to showcase. Um, you know, right now, you know, as things sit, I feel like there's a huge void. Uh, being a resident with a young family, you know, the market to the park and those kind of things done at Crescent Park are fine, but there's, there's no real draw and there's nothing really to keep people there on a day-to-day -day basis. This would be a place that employees uh, in the area can hang out, residents uh, would be able to go uh, on-site and off-site, um, and especially with a lot of the businesses that we're going to be bringing in here, it's going to be a nice natural barrier to, 
the parking garage we have for University of Chicago leading into the entertainment district to the north end of the site and vice versa. This will still have a lot of activations. Uh, we have in here um, seasonal container structures for you know sandwich shops, ice cream, those kind of things. Um, I was listening, you know, we were trying to figure out what could be the focal point uh, in the middle and I listened in on the last board meeting and you know I really liked um, Trustee Fenton's idea of a Heroes Memorial Park. Uh, I, I wasn't too keen on it being next to the police station. I, I actually think it should be showcased in the center of our town, in the center of downtown. Uh, and this would be in, uh, pay respects to all of our first responders, police, fire, medical, um, uh, and such. And uh, I, I really like that idea and I think this, this could be the place to showcase it. Again, just ideas, just concepts, but these are some of the ideas that we had and we think we can bring to fruition. Um, you know, to, to kind of go off of what is currently in Crescent Park, I think there was more of a, you know, s uh, entertainment kind of band shell feel. This is another iteration um, I'm probably not as, as fond of, but uh, still could work. And then this would allow for more gathering, larger kind of events, concerts, uh, still a ton of activation, those kind of things. Uh, but I, I definitely would like to see some water features there. And we still, I think, fit in a Heroes Memorial Park on that slide as well. That's just a kind of an overall blocking plan of a uh, one um, part of the site, uh, what it could look like. And then we just have a couple renderings on the street view of, um, that's the, the civic building auditorium that we have envisioned on one side, and then that's the park with a cascading waterfall on the other. And then that is a, a night view of a potential entertainment district with uh, showing the density of the buildings, showing the pedestrian uh, walkways, and uh, the kind of, uh, you know, the kind of nightlife that uh, we feel Orland Park is ripe for at this time. That's it. Thank you. Um, any questions, comments from the board? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Milani. Uh, yeah, taking a look through the, uh, the memorandum of understanding and the, uh, and the consulting agreement, I think there's a few, few comments I'd like to make. You know, one, I like the idea of the pricing of the parcels uh, based on uh, best use. I think we've got over nine acres left to develop there. So I think this gives you flexible options. It gives us flexible options as well on how to pursue a plan. So I think this is a great idea. The next thing I like too is the, you have included a timeline actually that has deadlines. Uh, that's kind of something that, uh, you know, we ended up in kind of a never-ending discovery and planning phase and never got to the end result here. So I think that's going to help kind of guide, guide the vision. And I also like the fact that you brought an initial vision here tonight, I mean, in such a short time. You know, this is going to show us a mix of commercial, restaurant, retail, residential. You've got the public spaces that everybody's been looking for, the walkability aspects and opportunities for entertainment. So I think it's kind of bringing the best of everything that people have been asking for. So, and also I think it helps us maximize the use of the land in the best way possible too. And I also noticed that we were also taking care of the parking issues. So these are all things that we've had issues with the past, so I'm glad you've taken them into consideration and moved so quick on this. So I'm looking forward to seeing more. Yeah, that, the biggest issue at least we've had over the last decade or, or more is uh, just inquiring, or we would have a lot of people inquire, you know, when we bought the center across the street. Uh, we have a lot of small shop space. We don't have large space. So if a 10,000 square foot or more user would come and say, you know, what's available, I would actually call the village and say, hey, on the triangle parcel, what do you have available? How much is it? And when is it available? Nobody could ever answer a question in a decade, which is unbelievable uh, to me. So that, that added to our, uh, you know, not, the frustration turned into motivation. Uh, to do this ourselves and try and figure it out. Any other comments? Mr. Mr. Chairman? Trustee Fenton. This point uh, for George. Um, is there a reason why, and I'll say myself because I don't know what anybody else has been privileged to, but um, for other projects that we've had, we'll take Ziegler for example, you know there was a big push to make sure that all the trustees got to meet with the developer, look at the project, yada yada. Um, why was I, I'll say it like that, I'm speaking for myself, um, 
no one ever contacted me to sit down with uh, Edwards Realtor to go over this until, and no presentation until this evening, unless you want to count Friday when it came in my packet. But why would such a major decision to be made tonight was I, and I don't know about anybody else, not afforded the courtesy of being able to sit down with them prior to tonight's meeting? Uh, so uh, two things. One is um, the board directed staff to start negotiating with Edwards, and that's exactly what we did in short order, and we started doing that. Because this project is so big, uh, unlike like a, a Ziegler where what you, what's being presented gets approved, what's being presented today is really the preliminary step. It's the very, very first step. So um, those conversations with, with board and developer, this is, this is exactly what's happening right now. So we're, we're very early on in this whole process and there's going to be a lot of these conversations that are gonna occur over the next year. So today, all, all we're approving today is uh, an agreement with Edwards that uh, we agree to keep working towards an MDA. It's the MDA that is the, is the, uh, the final, is the, is the important document. And within 12 months, uh, one way or another, it, it, whether we get an MDA or we don't, it'll, we'll know that. So today, what we're seeing here are just, are just concepts. Things are up there. But we're, we're starting that process where the board, the developer, staff, we're having those conversations. And that's fine and dandy, but I still feel this is being shoved down our throat in a quick manner. And I respect the Edwards family. I've known them for years. But I just feel that they weren't even given the opportunity to meet with any of us to discuss their plans. And I think that as an elected official, I think we shouldn't be left in the dark when we're making, trying to make major decisions. And this decision has a lot of dollar amounts attached to it, too. So okay. that's just my, my feeling. And I apologize ahead of time to the Ramsey family, to Ramsey and his family, sorry, Edward's family. Hassan. Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> Trustee Dodge. The number of questions for staff or Mr. Hassan. When we, and by the way, thank you, because your conceptual plans look a lot like what we've talked about previously. So I'll take that as an explicit and an implicit endorsement of the original conceptualization of the parcel. Now we're in the detail stage. So I appreciate your thoughtfulness. Broadly, that scene pictured, is that possible in these plans? That exact scene, uh -huh. uh, it could be. Where? Any of the open areas. Okay, thank you for that. Question for George. George, talk me through the consulting agreement. Sure, um, if I can ask Scott Day, or, or actually Tom Bayer and Scott Day, if you guys can come up to the podium there and just maybe um, my, discuss. To refine my question, how and when would the consultant get paid? And does it or does it not compare with previous deals and our typical approach with incentives for pay for performance, not pay for activity? Well, as to previous deals, I can comment on that. I would have to have staff comment on that. But the way the consultant would get paid in this, uh, under this consulting agreement, there's a monthly payment to the consultant of $10,000, and then there is a payment to the consultant of not to exceed $150,000, and that would cover independent contractor subconsultants that the consultant may have to hire in order to do certain tasks as authorized by the village, and then there are out-of-pocket costs. Those payments are not made until the contract is terminated. If there is early termination, the entire amounts are not due. If the termination early is by the village, the consultant gets paid for the number of months of consulting fee that were incurred, plus any out-of-pocket and third-party services costs that were incurred to date. If the consultant terminates the contract, the consultant forfeits the consultant fee, 
and only is reimbursed for any out-of-pocket costs and third-party consultant costs that they have actually incurred. If the project goes to the end, the full 12 months of the consulting agreement, at that point in time, if the consultant is chosen as the master developer, which is not a guarantee, but if the consultant is chosen as the master developer, at that point in time, all consulting fees and all third-party out-of-pocket costs and actual costs incurred are waived as a, uh, in regard to moving forward with them as the master developer. If they are not chosen as the master developer, then the entire consulting fee and third-party out-of-pocket costs and actual out-of-pocket costs would be paid to the developer at that time within 30 days of the end of the 12-month term. So to summarize, and I'm just a simple kid from the south side of Chicago, we're paying for this service. Yes, you are paying. The consulting agreement provides for the payment process for the consultant to work with you on the MOU. The MOU then would result in a redevelopment plan that could be turned into a master development agreement with the consultant or another entity as chosen by the village. Okay, another question for, uh, for I guess, the, the developer or staff. Entertainment district, the last time we ran this idea broadly around the track, it was worth a 30 or $40 million incentive. That's my recollection, so correct me if I've got the numbers wrong, but I think we asked for a pretty big incentive the first time we tried this. My numbers broadly in the ballpark? I believe, the it, ballpark. Was, I believe yes. it was 15 million yeah. was what you, when you did the There was a few plan. iterations of that, yes. Okay, thank you, Ramsey, appreciate that. So that still potentially is in play. Um, well, well, no, that's, that's not in play. You're not asking for incentives, and you don't envision asking <laughs> for incentives. We will ask for incentives. I mean, you see all the public spaces in the parks. Those things don't pay for themselves. That's why this is a collaborative effort. It depends on what you guys want and what the residents want, and how do we incorporate that into a plan, and if there's a delta between what the market will bear and what the village wants, that, that will have to be filled somehow, and you know, we're a for-profit organization, and that would not come from us. I understood. Okay. Very clear. I've understood that for a long time about this development with this project. We showed a parking deck. You said roughly 300 spaces. Is that correct? Correct. Back of the envelope math, 20 grand a space, $6 million for the deck? Could be, yeah. Okay. I'm assuming we can't load that into the, uh, the cost of the project, so that potentially is another source of village incentives? like what we did with the University well, of Chicago deal? Again, this is all conceptual. So all you have to do is say, you know, it, depending on where the costs bear out, maybe we don't do the residential on top of uh, parcel B. Or, you know, we have this giant um, auditorium, you know, civic building that, you know, might have 2,000 people. If we uh, skinny that to, our, uh, to another option, um, we don't. We can surface park this, and we don't need any structured parking. So that's why that's you're exactly pointing out the purpose of a consulting agreement because you know we don't have a set. We're not uh, you know developers that do one thing and one thing only, and we know what we have to do. We know the incentives we need, and you know rinse and repeat uh, across the country. The, these are very specialized projects. These are very different circumstances with very different municipalities uh, and, and uh, appetites for incentives. So, you know, we're working backwards, actually. I, I said I want to do this backwards. I want to see what we all want as a collaborative team, which will take months and months, and then let's back into, um, you know, how everything can be financed. Continue my questions. Um, on parcel H, are we settled with all the outstanding issues with University of Chicago, George, on parking? Uh, previously, we were um, with the structured development. Uh, we are going to be regrouping with University of Chicago uh, to introduce them to this plan. And um, but previously, we were we had worked out all those parking issues. So that idea is aspirational. Thank you. Can you give me a percent uh, it, of real real quick, George? I think to fill that in, they're not making the same ask that they were made that uh, structured development. So they're not asking to use any of the Chicago, University of Chicago parking like structured was. Correct? That's correct. 
Continue my questions, Mayor Pico. Um, how much office as a percent, how much residential, how much retail do we envision off the conceptual plans? I mean, I have several iterations of each. I, I couldn't tell you that off the top. I'll take averages. I don't have that for you. Um, I could say more commercial than anything else. Residential is probably 20 or 30%, same as uh, office. Got it. Question then for the, uh, for the attorneys. I want to make sure that my distillation of these agreements is correct. Whether it's an explicit payment or an implicit payment, if they become the master developer agreement, we're paying for these services. Is that correct? We're either paying them if we cancel the agreement or we're paying them because it's rolled into the master development agreement. Is that correct? There's no requirement that a payment to them is rolled in the master development agreement. You're only going to pay them at the end of the 12 month period if they are not selected as the master developer. If they are selected, they've agreed in the consulting agreement to waive any right to payment under the consulting agreement. Again, we're paying for it. Got it. I think we're in agreement. There's considerable room here for a substantial ask for public incentives, right, as we've talked previously. So that's not new. I'm just putting it on the table for this community. This is all great. This happens with a lot of public investment. And at some point, there probably will be an ask for incentives, as we've had from all the previous developers, because, Ramsey, as you said, what do you want there? And if the market won't bear it, Orland Park, write the check. For any, That's been consistent yeah. for dec a decade. Yeah, yeah. For any significant public-private partnership, there, will, there should be some incentives. Right. And then, you know, finally, at the end of the day, like the plans, as I said, they're broadly consistent with what we've been working on. Thank you. They're broadly consistent with what you've brought forward previously. Thank you. And now... You know, are we prepared to go down this pathway with potential um, big investments, uh, incentives, you know, out there and what the market will bear? Because ultimately, all of these fine words and all of the notwithstanding anything else we've said in this agreement language that lawyers typically use, this will be a highest and best use of the land. So conceptual plans are one thing, but I had a boss once who said reality is a constraint. So I want people of Orland Park to know this may turn into largely a residential and retail site might not have office, might not have entertainment, might not have water features unless we write big checks. That's the f distillation of what we're talking about here, correct? We have choices to make, Ramsey, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, we, yes, in Thank a collaborative you. effort, choices will have to be made, you're correct. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Uh, Trustee Katsinas. I just wanted to say thank you, Edwards, for stepping up to the plate. You've been very good community partners over the years, and your success is already proven in town, not only in Orland Park, but also outside of Orland Park. You definitely have a buy-in being a resident of this community with your families, and you've proven what you can do with Orland Crossing. So I'm very happy to see you here with your uh, slideshow telling us what the possibilities are, but it's going to be a, a lot of decisions along the way. So I thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Just the calendar drill. I want to echo everything that Cindy said, that uh, you guys are uh, definitely members of the community that, that we see, that we know, mm -hmm. um, that you have a track record. However, right now, this is, you, as you just said, it takes months and months to develop these, and I, there's just too many questions here. And, I, you know, as uh, I, I kind of disagree with the whole let's talk versus negotiation. I feel like we got pregnant really quick in a month uh, with our developers. I don't know why the rush. Like, you know, this is multi-million, multi-generation. Our kids, our grandkids will probably play together on that and whatever's there. I just think it's too too fast. And there's still a lot of questions and, and I wasn't involved in any of the discussion. So Trustee Fenton and I, it's two at least. So, and but I also understand my role on this board. So I just feel like it's a little too fast and I'm at this time make a motion to table. Second. Call the roll on the motion to table. Trustee Calandrello? Aye. Trustee Dodge? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Healy? No. 
Trustee Getzenis? No. Trustee Milani? No. Mayor Pico? No. Motion fails. Any other questions or comments? Mr. Mayor? Trustee Healy? I think that, um, I, I feel like we're, we're pretty lucky to have a homegrown, experienced, professional firm take on this development. I think the timing of it is uh, good for both them and Orland Park. And I'm anxious to see the TIF district get developed. And I hope they can, that the staff and George and the staff can help develop this, uh, this master partnership agreement down the road. Uh, I understand that the details aren't there. I haven't talked to anybody about this or anything like that, but I'm comfortable knowing that we got to get the path, we're going to get go down this path, and we're not wedded yet. It's just, we're just looking at it, and it's, I think it makes good business to go about it in this approach. But thanks, Mr. Mayor. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Milani. I just want to say thanks to staff, actually, for getting this to us proactively as well. To be able to get this on Tuesday instead of on Friday and then have to look at it all weekend, I really appreciate that. Um, and, um, you know, I wasn't expecting the presentation today, you know, when it, when it came out on the board packet. I was, I was happy to see that we were going to see at least a vision of, of what we were heading towards. And let's keep this in mind, it's a vision. And like everybody has said out here, we're going to co communicate, we're going to collaborate, and we're going to work together to do what's best for Orland Park. We want resident input, we want feedback, and we want to have open conversation. So I'm looking forward to that partnership. So thank you. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman. Trustee Dodge. I too was one of the uh, trustees that uh, had no discussions on this or any requests from staff or input, even though I'm reasonably certain I have a pretty good history with this project. And uh, quite frankly, not happy about that process. Any other comments or questions? So I'll make my comments before we um, uh, move forward with the vote. Um, so, you know, we've been at this for 20 years. Um, and, uh, you know, most of us haven't been here uh, for 20 years um, dealing with it. And uh, the, the process was a long one, the RFP process. We chose one, um, and uh, two of us that were there at the time voted for, for this project. Um, and in the modified version, which was not 30 million, like we said, it was a $15 million incentive. And uh, um, one of the things that we've talked about a lot then and now is that this needs to be a project that benefits all of Orland Park, not the residents of 143rd and LaGrange. And I know that Ramsey and his team shares that vision. Um, also, what we talked about, at least from my perspective, and we can never tie the hands of a future board or a future mayor, but um, from my perspective, it needs to be uh, majority substantially um, commercial, which would be office, restaurant, and retail, which is what we've talked about and what you've, what you've presented here um, with, the, with the remainder. So that's very, very important. Um, you know, in, in the past, we've spent uh, over a million dollars drafting plans, multiple sets of plans back in the early 2000s through 2005 or 6. I know many of us have seen many of those versions. Um, and, uh, you know, so it, Things have changed. COVID has changed how things how things work. We've been through this process for a long time with with uh, Edwards and and selected them the first time as one of two, and then it was a five two vote to move forward with structured. But fortunately, they're still here and they're still interested and they're still engaged in a, in a time of COVID and they're local, so they know that now they live here. They know what the the residents want. They've lived here for a long time. They understand. Um, and getting into this process develops a true partnership where we can work together with the village together with our residents and with the future village board because none of this gets approved without the future village board approving it. So there's plenty of time for, um, uh, for um, residents and the like to, uh, to still get engaged. And we plan on having all of that engagement if I'm here and uh, working together with the residents, the future board, uh, Edwards Realty, and the marketplace because we don't know everything the marketplace holds. We do know that there's, uh, an, that one of the reasons the office building's that big is because we know we have a one floor user that's interested in that, that size office building. We know we have a couple of restaurant users. We know we have some of that, but without having this in place, we can't get them into the fold. We need to get them into the fold. So this is a step before the MDA that allows us to do that. 
So I think it's a great, I think it's a great plan. I think you're, you'll be a great partner. Um, and uh, with that, I'll, I'll uh, ask the uh, clerk to call the roll. Trustee oh, Mike. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so we do have to amend the consulting agreement. Um, so I will entertain a motion to amend the consulting agreement to change the words in section two and three from contractor to consultant. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Gatsinas? Aye. Trustee Milani? Aye. Trustee Fenton? Aye. Trustee Dodge? Aye. Trustee Calandrell? Aye. Trustee Healy? Aye. Mayor Pico? Aye. And with that, uh, call the roll on the amended motion. Thank you. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. No. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Ely. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Motion carries six to one. Look forward to working with you, uh, Ramsey, Mr. Hassan. Thank you. NeoGov Human Capital Software Contracts. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Milani. I move to approve the contract with Insight Public Sector Incorporated through the Omnia Partners Cooperative Purchase Contract for HR software products and services, including NeoGov, PowerDMS, CritCall, Biddle Test Genius, Assure Hire, and Spark Hire, with work to be performed by governmentjobs.com, DBA, NeoGov, and PowerDMS for a three year total not to exceed amount of $193,079.18, and to authorize the village manager to execute all related contracts subject to village attorney review. Second. Any questions or comments? Call the roll. Trustee Milani. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Veterans Voices Military Group License Agreement for Orland Park Veterans Center. Mr. Chairman. Trustee Healy. I move to approve the license agreement between the Village of Orland Park and Veteran Voices Military Group Incorporated for the use of the Orland Park Veterans Center located at 15045 West Avenue and authorize execution of said license agreement by the village manager subject to the village attorney review. Second. Are there any questions or comments? And I guess first we'll let uh, Darrell Worth. Yeah, good, good evening, Darrell Worth. I'm Orland Park Veterans Affairs Office. Earlier this month, I received a request from the Veterans Voices Military Group, Orland Park, seeking to share meeting and ad address space at the Orland Park Veterans Center, 150 45 West Avenue, Orland Park, Illinois. The Veterans Center is an Orland Park owned property. I'd like to introduce Mr. Ellen DeNormandy, treasurer of the Veterans Voices Military Group, with our request to the Village Board. Ellen. Thanks. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Mr. Mayor, uh, members and trustees of the board, uh, I'm Alan DeNormandy. I'm treasurer of the Veteran Voices Military Group. Uh, we were established back in 2014 and have uh, continuously met uh, throughout the village, but primarily at Faith United Methodist Church in the village. And uh, we are growing now to the point where we're going to be a standalone organization. Uh, this year we uh, were accepted to be a 5013C non-for-profit. And we feel that the setting for what we do and how we do it in aiding veterans would be better suited if we were to locate and do most of our activities in the Veterans Center here in the village. So that is why we're here to petition uh, the opportunity <clears throat> to do that. Uh, you have a, a little flyer. As they say, a picture is worth a thousand words. Uh, a little bit about the things that we do and how we do them is listed here. And I'm here to answer any questions that the trustees may have. And uh, the one thing I'll comment is that this has been uh, coordinated with the VFW and the Legion, who are the current tenants of that. So um, Veterans Voices is deconflicting with that. And as you can see, the agreement uh, says that, that, that uh, the Legion and the VFW, as prior tenants, get uh, priority. But I think it's a great use um, to uh, add someone else. Uh, any comments or questions? 
Mayor Peacock? Trustee Dodge. To the groups, thank you. Any, any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Trustee Fenton. Just want to thank the troops for always supporting the uh, United States of America and for giving us the freedoms that we have on a daily basis. It is with honor that we serve. Any other comments? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you know, obviously, thank you all for your service, and we're, we're very happy to have you and, uh, and utilize that building even more. So thank you. Um, with that, call the roll. Trustee Ely. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrella. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Mayor Pico. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. So we have uh, non-scheduled citizens and visitors. I have several um, people. Um, so we have uh, John Stalser from Fox Bend. I think this is week five in a uh, meeting five in a row or so. So a reminder, you have three minutes. And I was not in D.C. on uh, January 6th. Hello, thank you for allowing me to speak here today. My name is John Stalzer. I've lived in Orland Park for four years. And I'll just say it up front, uh, I am a proud working union member. I'm also a father, a taxpayer, a contributing member to society, a student, and at times a teacher. I've attended a multitude of fundraisers, including police, and I, my family has donated to many causes. <clears throat> and I've, uh, I've been to a number of these meetings recently, and apparently I've been intimidating the mayor according to his recent comments. Now, I don't think I'm an intimidating guy. Uh, all I've been doing is asking questions to the mayor in an open forum, which I thought was abiding by the rules of this meeting. But mayor, but the mayor doesn't seem to like that. Like for instance, uh, all the seats being reserved out of nowhere wasn't like that March 1st. And residents being stuck out in the lobby back there. Uh, the live feed was cut off March 1st. We ended up watching a basketball game, which wasn't even a good game to be honest with you. Um, so that, uh, I will ask, be resolved in some way. Every resident should have the opportunity to sit in these seats, first come, first serve basis. At least that's I, what I assumed what was going on. Mr. Mayor, I have every right to be here. My, com my comments are in order, and every person in this audience has a right to be here. This is not a kingdom where you get to lock people out. Maybe you should, maybe you would prefer that only your supporters get to speak here, but that isn't the way things work. Instead of attacks, I think you should thank the working people who have taken time out of their day to do their civic duty and be here tonight. Your opinion on a worker sounds a lot like you're taking a page out of former Governor Rahner's playbook, which speaks volumes of your thoughts about the middle class workers in general. Again, I think you should thank workers rather than verbally attack them. And please stop cherry picking the seats available in this hall. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. I can't really read this name. Um, Anthony, Anthony Malori? Malori? Chief, is there someone coming? Anthony uh, Mon, it looks like Monlori or Mon Montori. I Okay, um, George Reyes.
Hello, my name is George Reyes, and I've lived in Orland Park for over 30 years. I am frustrated and concerned that Mayor Pical is attacking union members in Orland Park. I live here, I work here, I care about the values in Orland leadership. It is shameful for Mayor Pical to call union political part participation a Chicago tactic. Unions and I have the right to our opinions. We are parents, neighbors, friends, and volunteers. We are carrying Orland Park community members, and yes, we are also union members. There is nothing wrong with that. Mayor Pical, you owe union members an apology. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Patrick. Patrick Fur? Fox. Patrick Fox. No Patrick Fox, okay. Um, Michael Schaff. Hello, my name is Michael Schaff. I've lived in Orland Park here for just over a year and a half. It's my understanding that residents are allowed to participate in these meetings and to speak at the designated times. But apparently Mayor Peacow thinks that if you're a union member sitting on a board of trustees meeting is intimidation. That's what, I, that's what he said. I think we should be encouraging everyone who has a stake in this community to attend these meetings and voice their concerns. I do not think it's appropriate for Mayor Pical to attack residents for simply attending village board meetings. That's not what this community stands for. If you think village residents attending board meetings is intimidation, then maybe you are in the wrong line of work. Please let's welcome people to this process, not try and shut them out. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. Okay. We have uh, Jean Stacy. Hello, my name is Jean Stacy. I'm a resident of the Village of Orland Park and a member of the Open Lands Fund Commission. The Open Lands Fund Commission is authorized by village ordinance to advise on open land acquisition in order to preserve natural areas, including habitats for endangered and threatened species, wetlands, and areas with unique natural heritage qualities. Old Oak Hill and the Nature Center were recommended and then acquired per that ordinance. I believe there is a public trust that these areas will be forever protected in accordance with the Open Lands District Zoning Ordinance. Old Oak Hill is located at 1100 West 143rd Street, which is east of Wolf Road and immediately adjacent to the strip mall at the northeast corner of 143rd and Wolf. Old Oak Hill was never intended to be excavated for compensatory floodwater storage of Long Run Creek for the future 143rd Street widening project. The site contains 100 plus year old native oak trees. The 
Chicago Wilderness Organization estimates that only 17% of the region's oak ecosystems 150 years ago remain today. Furthermore, based on their diameter and therefore age, oak trees on the site are so-called heritage trees that are protected by the village's land development code. The Nature Center is located at 13951 South LaGrange Road. The Nature Center site grounds were acquired by means of purchase and donation, planned, designed, constructed, and eventually opened to the public just last summer. The site was not envisioned to be traded to the forest preserves of Cook County in exchange for land of theirs that might be needed to widen 143rd Street. I One visit, minute. I visit the Nature Center frequently. Uh, the site is a hot spot on the Cornell Lab of Ornithology's eBird website on which recreational birders across the country report their sightings. The state endangered black crown night heron has been seen there. The state threatened osprey has flown over the site and attempted to build a nest last May on the cell tower across Southwest Highway. Presently, a grant is being pursued for an actual, uh, actual osprey nesting platform to be installed on dry land just north of the Geonicus wetland. Old Oak Hill and the Nature Center are special places. Open land, including 30 seconds. our historic farm, contribute to the uniqueness, enjoyment, and value of our village. Please carefully consider the resolution being brought forward today and do the right thing for the people of Orland Park. Thank you. Thank you for your comments. It's not on the agenda, so. Board comments, uh, Trustee Fenton. Um, yes, first of all, I'd like to send out a uh, thank you to um, our police officers for an incident that took place on March 4th they did a wonderful job, but I think a little special uh, recognition needs to go out to our canine maverick. And he did a fabulous job that day and broke the case, and I think he deserves some special treats. Um, I'd also like to thank PW for getting the roads ready for tonight by salting every, but all the salt trucks were out this afternoon. I know they always have the safety of all the residents in the village at hand. Um, I normally don't take my mask off at this meeting, but I will for the next part of my board comments, so my glasses don't fog up. As a member of the Open Lands Commission, I am the liaison for the Open Lands Commission. Tonight I would like to pre uh, uh, present a resolution on protecting open lands as a public trust. Whereas the Orland Park Open Lands Fund Commission was established in 1995 by ordinance number 2797 for the purpose of acquiring and protecting important natural and open lands from the development of, for the enjoyment of the people of Orland Park in perpetuity. And whereas the Village of Orland Park residents in 2000, 2000 overwhelmingly approved a $20 million bond refer referendum tax measure to acquire open lands and accept other donations and grants in support of those acquisitions. And whereas the Open Land Fund Commission in partnership with the Village acquired over 300 acres on 23 different properties over 25 years to measurably improve the quality of life. And whereas these acquired properties include Orland Park Nature Center and the adjacent wildlife preserve and the old Oak Hill on 143rd Street, and all held in trust and preserved for the public. And whereas the village is working with the Illinois Department of Transportation, who is primarily responsible for funding to design and widening 143rd Street along Route Illinois uh, 7 between Southwest Highway and Wolf Road. And whereas the village has previously contributed substantial village funds and resources to IDOT for phase one engineering and by negotiating an easement with the Forest Preserve District of Cook County to provide the needed acreage for the road widening. And whereas the village in its new request in lieu of using normal roadway dollars for funding is now proposing to use the old Oak Hill site for, to meet IDOT construction rules, a surprise move which was not disclosed in previous status and public hearing process. Whereas the 4.9 acre Old Oak Hill was purchased for Open Lands Program in 2014 and includes remnant Old Oak Grove, which features numerous heritage white and burr oak estimated to be between 125 and 250 years old. 
whereas Old Oak Hill will be destroyed and converted into compensatory flood storage for the 143rd Street project without compensation to the village taxpayers, whereas the village is also proposing to pay an additional easement and impact fees for habitat loss to the Forest Preserve District of Cook County by a giveaway of the Orland Park Nature Center and Wildlife Refuge consisting of 39 acres along Southwest Highway, which includes a building, outdoor enhancements for public enjoyment, nature and wildlife viewing. And whereas the giveaways to these open land assets to other public agency represents a clear breach of public trust along with the serious compromise of the green leadership proposed and envisioned by the village comprehensive plan. And whereas if any permanently preserved public open lands can be given away or destroyed for such projects as 143rd Street widening, it establishes a dangerous precedent in the village of or Orland Park open lands and are not really protected and may be destroyed or lost to any number of other non-conservative conservation purposes. And whereas the open lands were acquired with local tax, tax funds for local conservation purposes, with the exception that they would be preserved in perpetuity, residents always held the expectation that their tax dollars and voluntary donations would only be spent for permanently preserving open lands, public open lands. And whereas these proposed village actions are allowed to occur, it would defeat the more than 25 years of open land advocacy, planning, fundraising, and acquisition of open lands uh, fund Commission. Where such giveaways violate the public trust mission of Open Lands Fund Commission and are clear in clear conflict with the whole purpose of the established Orland Park Open Lands Program. Therefore, be it resolved that the Orland Park Fund Commission strongly objects to the loss in, of any preserved open lands for non-conservation purposes, and particularly the destruction of Old Oak Hill parcel. Remember, with those 150 to 200 year old trees that cannot be replaced, at a no cost transfer of ownership or control of the Nature Center and Wildlife Re Refuge to subsidize state road expenses for 143rd Street project. These proposed village actions will seriously harm the credibility of the open lands of Orland Park program. Thus, this commission respectfully, res respectfully requests that the village board remove any properties funded by the open lands of Orland Park program from its project or any other in the future in the interest in forever protecting the lands held in trust by the public. The Open Lands Commission members, Lou Mule, President, Jeannie Stacy, Vice President Robert Sullivan, Secretary Wendy Conley, Treasurer, Judith Jacobs, Commissioner, Bob Gossinger, Commissioner, and myself. So I would like to submit that and copies will be sent down to um, all of the trustees. Trustee Dodge. Keep it simple. Orland Park has built up a lot of strengths over the years and uh, let's hope they continue going forward. Unfortunately, uh, transparency, collaboration, dialogue often die by degrees. Trustee Calandrello. Uh, just a couple quick comments. I just want to recognize the Veterans Committee for being so active. They all, they all left, but um, I hope George will pass on kudos that they're being very active. And um, I was just talking to Darren about the banner program and sold out this year, sold out or going, having a list right now for next year. So um, just seeing the excitement in his eyes about the project excited me more. Um, and I was excited already. So uh, I just want to give him kudos and he's not here anymore, but George, he makes sure you pass it on. Um, and then, <clears throat> so as everyone knows, uh, as one, I wish everyone, all of my Irish friends a happy St. Patrick's Day. And uh, I always do the Polish for my mother, now my father, St. Joseph Day on the 19th, two days later. So I get your cannolis at, uh, I do all in bakery, but I know Mariano's is good too. So with that, uh, have a good night. Trusty Healy. Thank you, Trustee Calandrello, for taking my two points <laughs> and elocuting better than I could. But I wanted to th thank the Hometown Heroes program. I'm looking forward to goes those things, and I hope one day to see maybe those banners or some similarity in the hallway out there, that barren hallway we have out there. But uh, we can only dream. And, then th and have, I hope everybody has a great St. Patrick's Day, probably one of the greatest days of the year. Thank you. Trustee Katsinas. Just want to thank staff for everything that they do. You know, all the stuff that we get in these packets, it's hours and hours of work that you guys put together. So I know we give accolades to the police a lot, 
but uh, to all the department heads and the people that work in, in the organization, thank you. you. You help make us informed and make good decisions, so I thank you for that. I just want to remind people there is curbside spring cleanup. It is the week of April 12th through the 16th, so you can mark on your calendar your regular trash day, any old furniture, household appliances, large uh, items of garbage that you wish to put out, you do so the week of April 12th through 16th, your regular pickup day. Thank you. Trustee Milani. Thank you. Um, Orland Park Special Recreation uh, actually hosted uh, what they call their Shamrock Shuffle on March 5th at the Civic Center where 20 people came in and participated. They enjoyed games, they got to dance, they got to have fun in a safe and modified manner. I won I want to thank the Orland Park Special Recreation, but also thank the Civic Center for continuing to have events and to continue to do things in a safe manner where everybody can get out and have some fun. Um, also, I'd like to thank the Orland Park Veterans Center for allowing the use of their facilities by the Veterans Voices Military Group. And then speaking of veterans, um, the Hometown Heroes banners will start to be displayed tomorrow morning on Ravinia Avenue. So as you'll be driving through there, you'll be able to see some of our local veterans and our heroes of the military. Um, also, like to remind everybody that early voting starts on Monday, March 22nd. You know, so make sure you get out and vote, make your voice and your choice heard. So, thank you and have a good night. Um, thank you. Um, so, I, I want to point out to everyone that uh, you know we don't allow people in the in the room here because uh, or that many people in the room here because we do have COVID pro pro protocols in place, which is why we do that. So in spite of what you may have heard earlier. Um, you know, also everyone has the right to speak, and to my knowledge, everyone has gotten to speak who signed up to speak, and including people who didn't sign up have stepped up to speak since I've been in here, and I think since every board member has been on here. So um, that's pretty normal, and that happens every time. Also want to point out that little um, thing we have over there, that came from the Carpenters Union, from uh, all the work we did with them, and they came here and presented that to us about, uh, what, two months ago? Um, so uh, that will hang right up there uh, as a reminder to, uh, to all the good work our trade unions do. So, uh, so th I want to thank them for that. Um, uh, also, calling out St. Patrick's Day, which happens to be uh, my mother's birthday, and today happens to be sandwiched in between her birthday and, and when she passed nine years ago. So it's kind of a special week for, for my family. So again, enjoy St. Patrick's Day. Uh, I know she would if she was, if she was still here. Um, I, I also want to thank the chief and thank Orland Square Mall. The youth supervision policy went extremely well this weekend, correct? So uh, it was, uh, and I was over there on Saturday, which was the second day of it, and the mall was packed. Uh, so which is great for the community of Orland Park. Uh, you know, dollars being spent there generates the tax dollars that allow us to have all the programs that we do. So uh, the mall does generate well over 10% of our tax base. Um, and indirectly, we figure it's 40 to 50 percent of our tax base. So, um, very important part of uh, Orland Park, and uh, we're we're happy to work with them with that partnership, and glad that they could do that. Lastly, I too want to thank the Public Works Department and all their hard work. We had the the uh, not unusual late March or mid March uh, snowstorm and snow event, and have to you know ramp things back up before then we end up taking everything off uh, of our equipment to uh, prepare for the the spring and summer. So thank them and uh, all, the, uh, all the Ask Me guys that work for Public Works for all of their hard work. So we really appreciate that. Um, with that, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman? Trustee Clinton. Could I just, um, I just I, I'm sure you would like to know this. The uh, Open Lands Commission is here just to give them recognition for being and, here and this thank evening. You, and thank you for coming. As we know that uh, we have 15,000 acres of forest preserve that either touch or are in Orland Park. We have 66 parks and 650 acres. We also have 250 acres of open land. So we have a lot of open lands that people get to enjoy and uh, will continue to enjoy in the future. So thank you very much. That I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustee Fenton. Aye. Trustee Katsinas. Aye. Trustee Dodge. Aye. Trustee Calandrello. Aye. Trustee Healy. Aye. Trustee Milani. Aye. Repeat, go.